Okay, welcome back to um, welcome back to our lecture on let's see from current slide. Welcome back to our lecture on drawing this is part two. I think we might be able to finish it in just two parts. When we were last talking, we were talking about pastel drawing, and I think we really have to when we're talking about pastel pastel drawing uh, start with Degas since some of his work is some of the most famous pastel drawings of all time, but the tradition of pastel drawing goes earlier than uh, than Degas, um, going back into the uh, 18th century. And here are two um, examples that I think are especially charming. I've actually seen uh, this piece um, uh, by uh, Leotard. Um, it's at the Getty in, in LA, and it's just gorgeous. It's such an amazing, beautiful drawing. You could study it uh, for hours. and. And then I also think that if you are looking at pastel drawing, you should also uh, look at the amazing works of pastel done by Redon. Redon is known for a number of his earlier works, but I think his late pastel drawings and the way he's both achieving very kind of painterly effects and yet using the pastels in a very drawing-like manner. So they have a, a drawing-like surface, but then the color resonance between these kind of these patches of colors is very painterly. The way he's using pastels is very particular to pastels, could only work for pastels, uh, wouldn't really work for any other drawing medium or other painting medium, and very much shows both how pastels are fundamentally a drawing tool and also fundamentally a type of painting tool simultaneously. And here's a contemporary artist who uh, works with pastels. Uh, Sheldon Tapley is an artist that actually I have met. Um, I worked at uh, Center College for one one year sabbatical replacement and I was Sheldon Tapley's sabbatical replacement. Um, I was a pale pale shadow of, of uh, uh, the, the teacher himself but uh, I did my best and um, here are two still life drawings and I think Sheldon Tapley definitely um, pushes the painterly aspect of pastels. He uses, uh, in terms of looking for the warm and cool of color and, and just the, the play of color and um, losing the sense of the contour line, he's really trying to find a very kind of painterly voice in the pastels. We're going to talk about him one more time, I think, in, in this uh, course when we talk about uh, hierarchy and the way he kind of plays with our hierarchy trying to make paintings a little bit or drawings a little bit difficult to read where you have to struggle to find the hierarchy but we'll talk about that later so this is a little bit of a survey of, um, of different art mediums that are in drawing we talked about charcoal and, and then we talked about pastels um, but another type of drawing tool that probably none of you are all that familiar with is metal point the various kinds of uh, metals, copper, but most especially silver, that you can draw with, where if you get a piece of silver and you sharpen it to a point, um, you can you can actually draw it and soft enough that you, if you have a hard enough piece of paper with a, a solid tooth, maybe some sort of sizing that helps it be a little bit stiffer and, and a, a little bit more uh, scratchy, you can draw with that piece of silver. And the other thing that's really interesting about silver point is that the silver, as it as it ages, it oxidizes, so it gets darker and darker. When you first draw with silver point, the drawing is very, very faint. You can barely see it. But as it ages over the years and the decades and sometimes the centuries, it gets richer and richer. And I think that's a, a quality of silver point that a lot of artists appreciate. Um, and it is a medium that has kind of returned favor for some contemporary artists. And both in terms of this idea of continuing to think about different sort of a survey of different mediums that are used in drawing, but also to think about expanding our definition of what is a drawing. Like I said, many people say that drawings need to be done with dry materials like charcoal or pastel, but then many drawings are done with pen and ink, whether it's a mechanical pen or a dipped pen, and many drawings are done with brush and ink, um, like these three examples, all three of them would probably be kept in that most museums in the drawing collection. Although some might not have um, 
this uh, given and the uh, Toyo in the um, in the drawing section, but almost every museum would have the Tiepolo in the drawing section. So now we're just going to talk about, we have a little bit more time to discuss some contemporary artists and some contemporary interpretations of drawing. And the first thing I want to just kind of get you to think about is how artists have kind of like expanded the definition of what is a drawing. Uh, fundamentally, we think of drawing as a two-dimensional um, activity, but Calder back in the back in the 30s um, or the 20s, he made these um, these wire pieces where he basically was making three-dimensional sculptural drawings. They're line-based, um, and when you look at them from a distance, they read like drawings, um, but they are three-dimensional and they have form and the lines move through space. Um, here's also a contemporary artist, Gavin Wirth, who does kind of contemporary works where also play up that idea of making a sculpture that reads like a drawing. And so here are some contemporary artists. We have a couple of minutes left before I'm going to get cut off. Uh, we've already looked at uh, Cy Twombly and Bryce Martin before, but I wanted us to look at them again as um, contemporary artists who they're still both still alive, both still making art. Wait, actually, no, I don't think Cy Twombly is still alive. Change that. Um, but Bryce Martin is still alive. Um, but artists who um, approach drawing as being all about mark making and about not about representation, but just trying to find the most the way to get to the mark that is um, that is most particular to them. And another in contemporary drawing, we see a lot. We see have seen a return to representational and figurative drawing, um, but all different kinds of interpretations. Whether it's something like this William Kentridge, where he's using kind of collage and drawing and kind of installation uh, together in a conceptual sort of way, or uh, Jenny Seville with her multiple multiple drawings overlaid over the top of each other, creating this kind of sort of cubist feel of like seeing things through time or uh, Raymond uh, Pettibon and his very kind of loose uh, installations of drawings. Another um, another thing we see a lot of drawings are very, uh, a lot of contemporary drawing really tries to, since drawing is such a pared down medium, tries to make drawing as minimal and pared down as possible. Um, and here we have two very different, but in a, some ways similar kind of approach, trying to reduce drawing down to its bare essence. Saul Lewitt, I'm not sure if I've talked about him yet. Um, in this particular drawing, in a number of his drawings, they what he does is he creates a set of instructions, right? So he doesn't make this drawing. Rather, he makes this drawing, this very drawing here, in his studio. But as he's making it, he creates a list of instructions that describe exactly all the decisions he's made and how he's going to make it. And then he sends those instructions to the gallery, and then they recreate the drawing that he made. So that his drawing becomes purely a conceptual work because it's just a list of commands. But uh, actually, I wouldn't use the word just. It is a list of commands. And in a way, that's trying to say that makes the drawing something more. Um, Richard Tuttle has a very different approach to drawing. This is a handmade drawing, but he's very much interested in this kind of, one of the questions that nagged him as a minimalist is that that question of like, how how small can a work be? All right, I'm running out of time. We just have um, a minute to go, but we're actually on the last slide, so very good. So my last example of contemporary drawing is uh, Toba Kadori. I love her work. She makes gorgeous pieces and they are very much about the tradition of drawing, the beauty of drawing, and they're very much about, um, even though, I mean, technically you might describe them as paintings um, because they do use um, oil and wax, but, um, but they feel like drawings and they're on paper, and, but they're huge and they're just so minimal and subtle. Uh, just really, I just love her work a lot. All right, thank you, all right. Uh, I'll see you next time when we start Unit 2.